we go under the four kilometers to go sign there and Swarty as he's known to everybody will cut his way through to rejoin his teammate at the front Hello TV, welcome Stephen Swart, three-time Tour de France rider, good friend of mine. Uh, Stephen rode the Tour in 1987 as a 20-year-old and then he rode for uh, ANC Halfords and then he rode in 1994 and 1995 for Team Motorola. So Steve, welcome. Thank you very much. Very good, um, Steve, we just wanted to, I put it on Facebook that what questions you want to ask our former rider? And so I'll, I'll, I'll ask you some of these questions that some of our customers wanted to know. Um, the first question was, what was your diet? What did it consist of? And did it change much from the tour and from training days? Training days is pretty much it. What's in the cupboard at home, you know? Still, uh, my sports people have a certain diet that they, they sort of tend to, but come race time, you know, like uh, in the tour, it's pretty, pretty gentle. You know, you're, you're burning them on the car and I won't really say you're replacing them all the time as well. So what do you have for breakfast? So for instance, tell us, tell the viewers what you have for uh, breakfast. No, oh, normal, you know, because most stages don't start until, say, midday. So normal routine would be getting up between, between about 8 o'clock, go down, have some cereal, or uh, some toast or, you know, like uh, over there they have, you know, breads, uh, a cup of coffee, etc. A bit of yogurt maybe. And fruit, and then uh, about three hours before the start time, uh, come down again and you may you know, sort of a main meal, which might probably consist of just an omelette and uh, pasta or rice or something like that. Okay, and during the ride, and so you start off, that's good, so you start off during the ride, when you, when you take on calories straight away, gels? Well, you have some with you, yep, uh, and obviously they're made up like little, little bits and pieces along the way. I mean, Generally speaking, it's you know back then gels weren't such a huge, yeah. huge thing like they are now. Mm -hmm. I mean, pretty much everyone you know you can get food food in a food in a plastic wrapper these days. So um, pretty much that's what they'd be taking on board plus plus drinks or whatever. And how many bottles would you have? Say a stage is say 160k. So if, say a five-hour stage race. How, what, how many bottles do you go through? Do you eat a lot of bottles? It varies depending on temperature and conditions and stuff like that. You know, it can it can range. I've, I've been in races where you know you, you may you may only take on one, and then other ones I've taken on thirty. So. And when say the stage finishes, um, tell us what how what's your meal plan between when the stage race finishes until you go to bed? What would you? Uh, normally, what we try try to do is as soon as you get off the bike. We try and uh, have something, uh, something sugary or sweet to stop the uh, to check, get the body to change over from burning its uh, normal uh, supply. Mm -hmm. you, you're supposed to supposedly supposed to do that within the first seven minutes, mm -hmm. and then uh, you know take, you're more more than likely you're, you're going to take on fluid before you are eating. Mm -hmm. And then once we get back to the hotel, they normally you know like in the tour for our and so. They'll have a little table up in our uh, foyer, foyer area that we have, and there'll be muesli and fruit and maybe a few biscuits or whatever. And, you know, you just go out there and snack, snack as you as you, as you please, and then come down for dinner. What time would dinner be? Uh, probably seven, eight o'clock at night. And what that consist of? Normally, um, like a risotto or a pasta meal. Uh, you know, uh, Chicken or, or um, steak or, or something, depending, sure. on, depending on what's happening the next day. You know, if it's going to be a time trial, or you, you're not going to take a steak on board, you know, you'll have something maybe a bit lighter. And then, what time would you normally go to bed? So, the, you, you have dinner, you talk around with the group, and you talk, perhaps you, would you talk about the next day's race, the stages, where you're going? Not really, no, that's sort of just reserved till you know, we'll have a team meeting in the, in the morning before we leave. You so know, between dinner and time, what time would you go to bed normally? You try and hit the hit, hit bed by say 10, 10 at the latest. <laughs> The Tour de France, which has seen so many great battles since it was first uh, brought to the roads of France in 1903. Um, another question, favourite climb in the Tour? Uh, any, anyone that you don't suffer too much on, really. <laughs> which climb did you suffer uh, the most? I, I mean, I hate the, the Alps are probably more favourable. Uh, better roads, 
be a condition to see yeah. that with the, with the uh, Pyrenees are probably more, more like New Zealand farms, you know, uh, sh short, some of them are long. Uh, and probably the most, some, the one that we have closest here tonight that brings back memories of the, of the Pyrenees would be something like climbing up the top of Tura. So that's about as close as a Pyrenees climb we've got here as far as I, I can recall. And what was, did you climb one too? Did you do yeah. one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And a time trial up there as well. Wow. So, yeah, Von Tee's, it's a special climb, but it's it's uh, it's like uh, up to easy, you know, it's got this uh, mystique about it, but it's it's just another climb. It's, it's primarily steep at the at the bottom for the first, until you come out of the tree line, and then it's probably just the openness that you're exposed to weather conditions if, it, if it's bad, and mm -hmm. then maybe the last 500 metres that it gets inches up there, but that's not too bad. Thanks Steve. Steve, another uh, question was favourite rider to train with and favourite rider to race against? Oh, train with? Um, gee. Oh, I've had just of different riders. Just teammates that you're training with? Yeah. Um, I mean, you're mainly doing your training if, you, if, if you're just pumping in miles and you you know, someone like uh, Steve Bauer was always good to go with, or uh, Frankie, mm -hmm. someone like that. Um, when you've got to do specific stuff, well, you're doing that by yourself anyway. And who you enjoyed racing against? Uh, were you competitive against racing, or were you just uh, your job was to do a certain thing in the team to no, really get into that? No, I mean, I, didn't, I wasn't, never had anyone favourite against it to race, but I mean, to so, say, yeah, you probably have more favourite races that you'd like to do that you perform well in. Yeah. That, that were nice. You know, favourite race for me was, oh, I love going to doing the Tour of Switzerland. Tour of Switzerland. Yeah, I mean, great roads, great food, great hotels, you know. You like, have you ever done the Delphine? No, no, because no, I was always um, on the other team with the Tour of Swiss. So you're the, t the lead up for the, say, 94, 95 was Tour of Swiss yeah. for the price yeah. for, for you guys. Okay, one of the questions was, what was your favourite? And most important piece of kit? Uh, probably your uh, shorts. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. You know, no one likes uh, putting on crunchy old uh, dirty shorts. You yeah. know, but you know, at, at that level, if something's wrong with them, you just go down to the team truck and exchange it for a pair of new ones. Did you use chamois cream? Yeah, yeah. You used a lot of chamois cream where yeah. you just wipe turn in the bib inside out and just. Just smear it. Just smear it. Yeah. I mean, normally if. Uh, the, the swineers that do that all for you, they come around the room, you just have your chamois up inside out and they'll, they'll take it on for you. Nice. Uh, do you get on terms of the rider you consider ins inspirational? Who do you consider an inspirational rider when you're, you're at your peak? Did you well, anyway, with, uh, you know, Phil was always a, a good inspirational rider. Paul, Paul Anderson. Paul Anderson, yeah. yeah, you know, he was tough enough, but I mean, we probably had a, more, a bit more in common because we were sort of from this neck of the woods, so, yeah, something near gelled a bit more than most. And say so, a writer like Indurain, who I don't think spoke much English, did you, would he converse with you boys, or did you have anything to do with Indurain from 94, 95, he was a tour winner? Not really, no, I mean, there's obviously mutual respect, but that's about as far as it goes. I mean, yeah. Everyone's just there doing their own thing. That's true. Um, did you get a boost? Um, athletes describe it when you're in, a, in front of a big crowd, say in San Jose. Did you did you feel that? As in, I remember Matt Goss. I heard an interview this morning that you know you got goosebumps coming in San Jose. Did you did you did you get that feeling? Last stage of the tour. Oh, the thing. You experienced that in '94, '95. What, what yeah. was the feeling? Yeah. Uh, don't know if you get goosebumps because you're just caught up in the moment anyway, and you know, yeah. objectives were to try and try and do well in those stages. So you're actually probably unaware how good those uh, those crowds are. But I mean, so did you notice them? Not really. No. I mean, so you probably you're more aware of it after the finish line yeah. than before. Were you, was it a sense of accomplishment finishing? Oh, absolutely, yeah. You feel yeah. top of the world? When everything's going well, yeah, but I mean, so it's also, I mean, it doesn't matter, I suppose, whether you're going good or going bad, it's good just to get there, because physically it's just, you know, the end of the, end of the road. Yeah. You know? 
Um, what was the lowest point physically, and how did you get past it? Uh, we're talking during the tour. Yeah, boy. during the tour, the hardest, hardest one day, one one day was '95 when the day after Casatelli died. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were just all, you know, just took its toll. You know, I don't know what something robbed all our energy, and we were just, you know, the whole group, whole peloton decided to ride slow that day, which. Yeah, it was nice, but it was probably also a mistake because it just uh, made it such a long day and drawn out and it was hot. And, um, you know, even though we were going slow over the path, we were still getting dropped, you know. We, we, yeah. we were physically just exhausted at the end of the day. And how did you get over that? Just sleep, you know, you come back, you, you recover. But it was just, you know, it was an intense afternoon after the stage until about midnight. So, you know, once again, you're out of that routine a little bit. It doesn't take much to upset the apple cart. Was the decision, did you think about pulling, pulling out of the tour? No, not really. I mean, it was, um, obviously Jim went back to his wife and asked what do you think the team should do, and she said, no, he would have liked you to continue on, and, and away we went. They now fell out across the road, and the riders holding themselves off at a respectful distance. To an applause the Tour de France has never known before. The Motorola team remember Fabio Casatelli. Was that the most vivid memory of the tour? What was the most vivid memory of the tour? That? Uh, well, I wouldn't call that a highlight. No. But I mean, uh, vivid memory, it's always going to be there. Um, so there's a low point of the tour, what would you say, a highlight, what was a highlight of the tour? Oh, a highlight of the tour is, you know, 94 probably, just getting into breaks, you know, it doesn't matter, it didn't matter what, what happened, I just, apart from being, being sick for a couple of days during, everything else seemed to ride along well, you know, I was getting better and better. Who were you in the break with that year? Oh, Durant, Jimmy yeah. Durant. Yeah, Durant. So how far were you away? In the front? About 130 k's. And you got caught right at the end? Yeah, not far from the end, you know. So you guys think you're going to win? You think you're going to... No, you wish, you wish you thought you were going to win, but yeah. you know, when you start seeing the time gap coming back down, it's, uh, you know, you don't know whether it's going to happen or not. And you have a better sprint than the Jack? No, you would have probably bowled it, but yeah. I'd say, hey, you committed to a break. He's a breakaway specialist, wasn't he? Yeah, he's a breakaway specialist, but you know, you're committed to a break, so you know, you know you're not going to sit there and, and half a half pull, you know, depending on the circumstances, but not, not 130 k's from home. Mm -hmm. Everyone's got to be committed. And next question was, is uh, what's your best race? Not necessarily your win, but what's the best race is rememberable in, in, the, or in, 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 in the tour? Best, like, one day in a race? Yeah. Oh, well, Hey, the 94, the team time trial, you know, we, we, we were going well. Unfortunately, I was in the break the day before. That sort of took a little bit of energy away from me, but, you know, we ended up second, but only by two seconds. So, uh, yeah, you know, so close, but yet so far. And then 95, you finished sixth in the opening prologue. Opening prologue, but that was probably more due to good luck than the weather. And management. The weather really changed. Yeah, yeah, the weather changed, but, you know. Uh, that's what it is, I suppose. And Steve, well, uh, who's your pick for this year's tour? Uh, I think that there's probably still a few favourites. I think we haven't seen any of them come out of the closet yet. Uh, you've got Evans. You know, Evans is, you can't rule them out. You can't rule Froome out. You can't rule Contador out. So, I, I don't honestly, looking at it now, I don't think you're actually going to see the true winner until maybe the third or the second to last day. And Steve, for viewers who don't know you personally, are you doing much riding now? What, what's your routine consist for for fitness and, and, and riding a bicycle? Uh, I'd like to do more riding, but it doesn't it consist of a whole lot riding now. Mind you, it is the middle of winter. Yeah. Uh, the plan is to step it up in the next month, after the next month or so. But normally I try and do a, three or four rides a week, you know, between around two hours. And if I've got you know, if I've challenged myself to something and set a goal for something, then I'll, I'll address it and uh, do a bit more. Awesome. Okay, Steve, thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, coming to see us. Thank you. Talk to us. Good luck. Thank you. Cheers, Thank you.